Now picture the disciples after Jesus died on the cross, so sad and distraught, suffering the grief of losing their teacher, their leader, their friend. In fact, since they had left everything to follow Jesus, this also meant that they were like orphans, lost, with no home, no job, no boss. Even Peter was confused enough one day to go back to being a fisherman. See John chapter 20. So when Jesus returned and started appearing to them, they were overjoyed. Everything they had experienced was not lost. Rather, Jesus was raised from the dead. Now they started to understand what he was talking about and the depth of love that God has for his people to offer his only son to save us. Then we come to today, the ascension. Jesus had been saying that he had to go for a few days. Really? The disciples must have wondered, so soon we just got you back. They did not really understand Jesus' mission. They must have felt like they were being abandoned all over again. Jesus had warned them in today's gospel. A little while, he says, and you will no longer see me. And again a little while, and you will see me. From John chapter 16. Are you confused yet? <laughs> so were the disciples. Right before this passage, Jesus had said, Now I am going to the one who sent me, but I tell you the truth, it is better for you that I go. They must have wondered, how can it be better to lose you again, Jesus? Jesus explained, For if I do not go, the Advocate will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. Aha! Now this is the secret to understanding the ascension. This is the reason that Jesus went back to heaven. See, in Jesus' body, he was limited, right? Yes, he is God, but he could only be present at that moment because his body was limited by time and space. Once Jesus ascended with his body to his throne in heaven, he would send his spirit, who is not bound by any limit. The Holy Spirit would dwell in each of our hearts, connecting us to Jesus and the Father in heaven. The Spirit is like the best Wi-Fi signal ever. Spirit Wi-Fi. God's love Wi-Fi. The Spirit is our ever-present and unlimited wireless connection to Jesus in heaven. Because Jesus ascended to the Father, we can all be connected to him anywhere we go for our whole life on earth until we ascend to heaven following his lead. Now, what is Jesus doing in heaven, you may ask? Well, I'm glad you asked. Don't think the Spirit's doing all the work and Jesus is just chilling on his throne doing nothing. Jesus, being at the right hand of the Father, continuously pleads for us to the Father. We see this in the next chapter of John, chapter 17, called the Prayer of Jesus. We can see that even on earth, Jesus was praying for not only the disciples in front of him back in the dead, but he prays in verse 20. He says, I pray not only for them, the disciples, but also for those who will believe in me through their words. Hmm. What? 2,000 years ago, Jesus was praying for us, for you and for me? Well, did we come to believe in Jesus through the Gospels? Yes. Then Jesus was praying for us back then and showing what he was going to do once he got to heaven. Now that Jesus is ascended, the feast we celebrate today, Jesus is constantly ple pleading for us, for our good, 
for our forgiveness, and for the grace that we need to make it to heaven. And that's not all. Jesus sent his spirit to dwell in our hearts through baptism and strengthened in confirmation. So get this. Are you paying, are you paying attention? Okay. Good. Our prayers here are connected to his prayer in heaven. Minds blown. Yep. The Holy Trinity is really a cool God. Three persons, one God, always working to help us to get to eternal life in heaven. Even when we are sleeping, reading a book, taking a walk outside, that is their mission to get us to heaven. The question, of course, becomes, will I cooperate with the Holy Trinity? Will we so desire to get to heaven one day that we will follow the commandments? Pray for the grace each day and avoid the things that lead us astray? And secondly, as we hear in various public service announcements during this time, will we realize that we are all in this together? And part of our job is to help each other get to heaven one day? Hmm. In the Feast of the Ascension, we see the clear link between uh, heaven and and earth has been established. Jesus goes up, back to the Father, but brings all our needs and hopes to God the Father with him, and then Jesus brings the Spirit down. He sends the Spirit down to us, to earth, to inspire us, to empower us, to live the gospel boldly, and to proclaim that we love and serve God and each other. The Spirit will teach us everything that we don't understand about Jesus and God's plan for our salvation. That's why he gave us the church. The Spirit guides the church to the whole truth about God so that we can have and know the path to get to heaven. The church has been given all the tools that we will ever need. The sacraments, the priesthood, the scripture, the community, the wisdom of the whole tradition of these 20 centuries of living the gospel. It comes down to our choice of whether we will live what I'll call an ascension life, focused on eternal life in heaven, or whether we will live a non-ascension a, a non -ascension life. Okay, non-ascension life. That only focuses on the now, you know, my pleasure, what I can do in my earthly existence. My brothers and sisters, the Spirit Jesus sent speaks through me today by the gift of the Spirit in my baptism, my confirmation, and the ordination to priesthood. The Spirit speaks through me to you to death, inviting you and challenging you to live an ascension life, to make the goal of your life to follow Jesus to heaven and bring as many people as you possibly can to that everlasting banquet of love and true happiness with God forever. Do you have the courage to make the goal of your life an ascension life? Amen. Alleluia. Happy Feast of the Ascension.